Good morning, folks. Solar storms have been going on for more than half a day here at Earth. Let's run down where we stand and what's affecting our planet. We're over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're finding that the last 24 hours of the Earth-facing disk was relatively calm. You've got the big, dark coronal hole stealing your attention, but also, top right, a couple plasma filaments departing the northwestern limb. They were standing up as solar tornadoes when they began to lift last night, and when the upward magnetism overtook the static attraction of the mass, it released. CME not yet visible on coronagraphs as this literally just happened. But folks, the real story back at Earth is in the solar wind. That speed spike you see over a thousand kilometers per second, that's just like the one that NOAA mostly ignored as an error last time. These are now confirmed. Something about this opening is delivering smashingly fast particles. The plateau on which the spike sits is a powerful stream in its own right. This drove strong geomagnetic storms and triggered the technological tropical storm and health alerts associated with it. KP coming down a bit this morning, but reverberation storms are definitely expected today. So let's go to Soho. Well, where did you come from, big guy? This was not the filament snapping or anything on the Earth-facing disk. Stereo A looking just behind the limb there from the other side of the sun, and it sees a titanic eruption has taken place on the far side of our star. Direct impact to Earth is obviously not expected, but folks, the CME activity has been in uptick mode for a couple days now, and even though the geomagnetic storm from this coronal hole has cut short the earthquake watch for a no-success period this time, they could wane away, while the CMEs from the last few days begin to couple electrically, and the coronal hole could actually still be facing Earth. There is a storm subsidence-dependent quake watch of the coupling nature into the weekend. Top stories include this, a new animation from the ESO on quasar halos. Standard model wasn't even close to their abundance or their temperature. The gas is so cold it violates most large-scale models. Dr. Tony Phillips, one of NASA's top guys, has a good blog post about their latest radiation balloon experiment. Just a reminder that one of the places alternative and mainstream meet on this issue is that the danger is not just for astronauts, but airlines as well. Lastly, folks, you might remember about a week ago when the solar wind speed spiked and we saw problems with the GOES satellites. Well, during that same heliospheric disruption, Juno went into safe mode due to a computational glitch. Just an interesting note on the same day events. Juno is out of safe mode now. Well, folks, we've got pressure and radar forecast across the globe, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.